Fructose is more hepatotoxic than glucose. It's a hundred times more hepatotoxic. Hello friends, welcome to week 12's q and joined by my lovely and helpful wife Lucy. Hi guys. Be sure to subscribe and like this video for the sake of the algorithm, please. Now let's begin with the first question of this week. So the first one is by Milad Big Daily. He said, hi Leo, you've probably mentioned it briefly in the conversation with Amin, but could you do a video on fructose, not processed high fructose corn syrup, but naturally occurring? A lot of people say it's bad for the liver, it makes you fat, and others on the other hand say it's totally fine. I personally try a meat and fruit diet for a month and I notice a drastic drop in performance. We'd love to hear your opinion on this as of everything else. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you, Milad, for your question. So to quickly answer your question, fructose ha as a molecule causes problems in the body. Mainly what it does, I'll try to think of all the concerns that could be involved biologically. It raises uric acid levels. It causes hypertension across animals. It lowers leptin levels, which we'll get into why that's an issue. It causes insulin resistance. It is hepatotoxic, like you asked. Uh, it has actually toxic at the, at the side of the liver. Let's get into more details. It's hard to summarize this yeah. one. So well, first of all, you know, fruit diets have been promoted by people for a long time, actually. If you go on Wikipedia, you'll find a page on fruitinarianism. Fruitinarianism is people who they only ate fruits. In fact, I think there's someone on YouTube who does this as well, but I don't know. Oh, the banana girl. That's what her name is. Oh. Yeah, so there's people who do that. Generally, these people don't tend to have great health in the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if it's directly the issue with the fructose or it's the lack of, because it's an elimination diet as well. Fructose, to begin with, it's associated in animals. Now, we don't have as many clear studies, by the way, with fructose in humans. It's harder for ethical reasons and things like that. It's hard to push bad diets on humans and see how they, yeah. how they end up. So for that reason, so we have a lot of rodent studies. From rodent studies, we know that fructose causes hypertension. Mm -hmm. It causes issues with the vascular relaxation of the vascular structure, of the arterial structure. In fact, it causes in the fat an increase in angiotensin type 2 receptors which leads also to this increase in hypertension. Now, clinicians and researchers have theorized for a while why is the hypertension occurring with these animals? And it's not completely clear because there's so many possible causes. It could be the uric acid levels rising. It could be the aldehyde levels rising. It could be the hyperinsulinemia, which means having too high insulin levels all the time. So that's uh, one group of things that you have to be concerned about. Another one is fat. So fructose by the liver is more likely to be created into fat than glucose. So remember, glucose is of course from uh, the, the other form of sugar we yeah. eat often, you find it in bread and stuff like that. And fructose is part of that sugar molecule, the sugar, the actual table sugar, that we don't dextrose, that we do exactly. So, so fructose, it can be turned into fat more easily by the liver. Additionally, it's shown in animal studies to increase the rate of fatty liver disease, the deposition of fat directly on the liver. Mm -hmm. So there's two things. It can be created into fat more easily for the body through de novo lipogenesis, but also through de novo lipogenesis, it's more likely to be stored as fat on the liver, creating the first stage of liver disease, the most common liver disease called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which affects about 40% of Americans supposedly, and would affect much more if you don't include children. And if you went to bodybuilders, I bet you'd have even higher levels of that. So the other thing is that fructose, by the nature of how it's metabolized by the liver uh, because of phosphorylation it automatically creates uric acid release in the body or, or uric acid development in the body now uric acid high uric acid levels are what our friend Imran has which is gout so gout we only laugh because Imran's a funny guy but gout is no laughing matter in fact gout has been rising in the US over the last 30 or 40 years yeah. after a long decline I mean, the last time we really heard about gout a lot was in the Middle Ages, you know, in the dark times you like to read about, but now uh, gout is more uh, common in the US. And what you find with gout is usually the telltale sign is that their big toe hurts them because of uric acid levels uh, oh. getting stuck in the, in the extremities of the body. So uric acid though has a big effect on hypertension. In fact, one of the thoughts about just generally why hypertension is rising in the US is because of uric acid levels. So automatically fructose has a thing with, with uric acid levels as well. Another thing is that fructose is more hepatotoxic than glucose. It's a hundred times more hepatotoxic. It causes 100 times more reactive oxygen species at the liver reactive mm -hmm. oxidant species or what antioxidants deal with. So unless an antioxidant, like in the liver, the main antioxidant is glutathione, unless that comes and deals with this reactive oxygen species, you develop hepatocellular damage, damage in the liver, directly from fructose. Another thing about fructose, which I didn't mention at the beginning, is that 
it has a, a poor effect on lipids. So it's been shown that fructose consumption increases small LDL particle count, which is the most dangerous kind of LDL particle count, the most likely not to get removed from the, from the vascular system and getting lodged in the, inside the arterial walls. Inside, by the way, not on, they go actually inside the arterial walls. Now, other than that, it also is correlated to higher VLDL levels and higher LDL levels. It raises the lipoprotein levels and it changes their nature, making them smaller. So this is an effect on lipids. Another interesting thing is it's been shown, I remember, recall one study with females in which after consumption of fructose, their leptin levels decreased. Now, leptin is a hormone produced by the fat in the body that signals uh, that we're full. When you have less leptin levels, two things happen. Number one, the body wants to store more fat so that it can release more leptin. So just through having lower leptin levels, the body wants to store more fat. Second of all, having lower leptin levels causes what's called hyperphagia, which is just being hungry. They like these words, you know. The more Hi sugar you eat, the more hungry you are. Yes, in, in a way, and this is one of the reasons why. I think there are more than one reason why, but leptin is definitely one of the reasons. Now, the interesting thing about all of this is this. In the short term, it also, well, one of the theories of why leptin levels rise is because leptin is usually released when insulin comes about in the body. So when insulin is released, leptin also is released, consequently. But fructose does not affect insulin. It's not stored by insulin. It's Glucose is stored by insulin. It's the main storage hormone of the body, but fructose is not, which is obviously one of the major issues with it. Now, the interesting thing is this. This. Although fructose consumption does not raise uh, insulin levels in the acute sense, it causes in the long term hyperinsulinemia. And this is very well known, this has been studied extensively. What hyperinsulinemia is, is having consistently high insulin levels. And this is a problem because this is tied to cancer, this is tied to storage of fat in, in the visceral fat, which is the dangerous one, metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome being characterized by a few things, including certain kinds of lipid issues, hypertension, as well as that adipose tissue in the between the organs. So this is the weird thing about fructose. It does not acutely raise insulin levels, but if you eat it enough long term, you get hyperinsulinemia and and we don't know the exact mechanism for it. there are theories for how but we don't know exactly why so basically fructose now this is I've just explained the main issues with fructose now what is the impact of this on the community what's happened basically is that in the last 20 to 30 years the low carb high fat community which I always talk about have taken hold of these discoveries about fructose and basically blamed fructose for the major problems with the Western diet as well as heart disease obviously stemming from the metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome makes you more likely to develop a lot of things. Okay. So they see that fructose is the cause of the metabolic syndrome. And by the way, I forgot to mention, and these people will usually point to triglycerides being higher in people who eat a lot of fructose. That's also true, but less obvious than the LDL, the changes in LDL and the nature of LDL. But the point is, the low carb community has taken fructose as the devil and the reason that fructose is the main reason we have all these problems going on with our health. My personal opinion, he asked about fruits, not in high fructose corn syrup. Now, obviously, high fructose corn syrup is a processed food. So processed foods in general are bad for you. But fructose, as I've been trying to explain, as a molecule is bad for you. In fact, some studies even using just orange juice have shown the same things that I'm describing here. So fructose itself as a molecule is bad. So how I personally think about it, and this isn't advice for everyone else, but this is how I think about it, is if a fruit or something containing fructose naturally, I never eat anything processed, right? Mm -hmm. But if a fruit is worth eating, like berries, which we both love, if it's really worth eating, then I'll consume it. It still has fructose, and if you eat enough of it, you'll feel some of those toxic effects. Honestly, you'll feel it. I even feel it when I eat, as I've mentioned before, sometimes I eat three bowls of berries, which is very rare, but when I do that, I don't feel too great. In fact, I feel the symptoms that I usually feel when I have too much inflammation in my body. Of course, we know that berries reduce inflammation, but there's something going on there with the fructose. So basically choose your fruits wisely. I mean, some fruits don't even have fructose. I like, for example, not much fructose, like lemons don't have much fructose. Kiwis don't have much fructose. And then you have other fruits that don't have much value that we know of, but have a lot of fructose like pineapple. You know, so choose your fruits wisely. That's how I would say. And I think if you're eating a lot of meat and fruits, you're probably going to feel badly and you may develop, you're going to feel badly because of probably a lot of things, including higher inflammation levels because of the meat as well as maybe the fructose. But you're also going to probably do worse with your workouts. I think that's what he's talking about because you're going to get a bit insulin resistant over time from the fructose. Mm, do you think it's performance decline because of the inflammation or because of the insulin resistance? Insulin I think, resistance. I think he means not, I don't know what he means if it means strength 
If he means strength, that's an interesting subject, but I think he means in terms of his results from, he's a bodybuilder, and that would, insulin resistance is the enemy of bodybuilding, mm -hmm. because that causes it to be much harder for them to grow muscles, and instead they store fat in the worst place they can, which is their abdomen. So, yeah, so thank you so much, Milad, for your question. Do you have anything else to add? All right, we'll see you tomorrow.